so we'll be starting our uh, next topic invoice verification part 2 okay in invoice verification part 2 the topics that we are going to cover they are uh, enter or change tax information in an invoice enter or change cash discount information posting of uh, gross or net net of cash discount enter invoice in foreign currency uh, enter invoice for po with account assignment group okay and entering invoices relating to a blanket purchase order so these are the topics we'll be covering in the invoice verification part 2 so we'll start with uh, uh, so basically uh, uh, most of the invoices most of the invoices received by received by a company are normally taxable okay uh, so the the person who does the invoice verification has to check whether the tax data is correct or not okay and also uh, so people has to take into account the terms of payment when they are in when they enter the data in the invoice okay and sometimes occasionally the invoice currency varies from the local currency let's say you are procuring a material from a foreign vendor so his currency might be different from your local currency let's say we have the currency inr let's say you are procuring a material from a uh, let's say uh, 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 in from england let's say from a uk vendor so his currency will be different pounds his currency will be pound so how to handle that that we will see it in the system okay and at the same time in the purchase order you can assign the goods to procure directly to an account assignment object in this case the materials are posted straight into conception and not into storage this already we have seen so in those kind of scenarios while doing the invoice verification how to post to multiple accounts that also we will see it in the today's topics okay so first we'll start with tax okay so normally uh, whenever you procure a material you procure a material you will be paying some tax to the supplier vendor which is called input tax let's say we have we are we are a company we are procuring a material from a supplier okay so when you are procuring a material from the supplier when we make the payment we will be making the paying the tax also which is called input tax okay and at the same time we manufacture a material and we sell the product to the customer that time we will be making the output tax output tax which is called vat value added tax so as per the country norms we will be making the tax we will be make, uh, paying the tax to the regulatory authorities regulatory bodies so this tax how you we are going to handle in the system we will see okay so when you do the invoice verification when you do the invoice verification invoice entry you will be making the you will enter the tax code in the invoice verification so according to that system will calculate the tax system will calculate the tax in the invoice verification so we will see that so let's go to the system okay so i'll go to the transaction bureau my arbo bureau okay i'll enter the company code 1000 so on the miro transaction if you observe by default system is proposing the tax domestic input tax 19 percent okay so this is the tax this is the tax code okay i will uh, we will discuss in a minute on what basis this tax code is defaulted here how it is coming by default we'll discuss in a minute okay so this is the tax tax code basically okay so when you create a po when you create a po and when you do the invoice verification this tax code will automatically get inherited to the purchase order items so i'll create a, a, a brand new purchase order let me 21 year i'm creating a new purchase order this is a vendor okay I'll enter two materials. Okay. 
okay i entered two materials okay so now check everything good now i'm saving the purchase order so this purchase order is having two items okay so let me take the item take take the purchase order i will do the good receipt okay gr migo migo okay good receipt purchase order enter the purchase order number okay i'm receiving the material into this storage location okay so now check everything is okay post it so we have received the material now when you do the invoice verification okay so when we do the invoice verification you see how system will behave okay just one what was the what was the po number just one minute. i mean 23n oh, so this is the po number so this is a po number now for this po let us do the invoice verification so i'll i'll start the miro transaction again miro okay so here in this transaction we enter the date okay enter now this is the tax code defaulted into the header header of the miro transaction so now i'll enter the our purchase order purchase order enter so now if you see here whatever the tax code which is there on the header will get automatically inherited to the line items so if you scroll to write if you scroll to write in the items the each item got the tax percentage tax code as a 19 percent which is inherited from header to the items items now if we change the tax code at the header level it will not change it to the item level so suppose now if i change it to 10 percent i1 input tax by 10 percent enter if i enter it will not change at the item level item level the old one remains the same old one remains the same if you want to change it here you have to change it again here manually so this is how the tax will work in the invoice verification in the miro transaction in the miro transaction so if you change at the header level it will not change at the item level if you want to change it item level you have to come here and you have to change it at the, at the item level also okay so this is the hello uh, hello uh, yeah see uh, this tax will come from po right no no it is come from it will be coming from the configuration i'll tell you how it is come from it will be coming from the configuration okay just give me one minute just okay. give me one okay yeah you can mute now you can mute now okay so this is what you need to understand so if you change the tax code at header level it will not change it to item levels again in the item levels it will take the initial tax code which you need if you want to change it you have to go at item level and you have to change it okay so that is the uh, entering the tax code in the invoice invoice entry during the invoice entry now how this tax code is getting defaulted in the miro transaction so suppose if i if i start the miro transaction again i am not posting this document again i am starting miro transaction okay if you when i try when i go to this miro transaction if you observe here the tax code va 19 percent is coming by default from where it is coming by default because of which setting you need to understand that so that setting is coming because of some customization in the logistics invoice verification so this is the path okay spro materials management logistics invoice verification maintain default values for tax code it will be maintained at company code level okay so i'll show you that let's go to the configuration spro sap reference ing scroll down go to what is the path materials management okay go to logistics invoice verification logistics invoice verification okay now go to maintain default values for tax code or you can directly go to transaction omr2 you can go to directly for that also okay uh, what is it maintain default values
what is it logistics invoice verification here maintain default values for tax codes here you see there is option of course here we missed incoming invoice just one minute let me add that incoming invoice incoming invoice okay so here you see maintain default values for tax codes so if you go here here the default tax code is maintained at company code level so we are using company code thousand so if you select the company code if you go to details see this is the one maintained tax code is va 19 percent domestic input tax so because of this setting when we go to the miro transaction by, by default system is proposing this tax code of course you can change it of course you can change it okay so this is the because of this setting because of this configuration setting system is proposing the default tax code normally this default tax code will be created by the finance team financial accounting team they will create but as a as a mm consultant you should know where it is available the main default tax code in the miro transaction okay either you can go through this entire navigation path or you can directly jump to this transaction omr2 okay so it is maintained it company code level so for each company code you will have a default tax code that is why for our company code it is coming as default thousand for thousand company code it is coming as default company code thousand this is coming by default of course you can change it okay so this is the default tax code now we'll discuss on the terms of payment okay so what is terms of payment sometimes you will have an agreement with your vendor that let's say if you make the payment within 10 days within 10 days of the due date you, he will give you a three percent discount and if you make the payment within 10 20 days of the due date he will give you the two percent discount and if you make the payment in 30 days he will not give you any kind of discount okay so these kind of things are handled in terms of payment terms of payment okay so this terms of payment actually maintained in the vendor master okay so suppose if i open a note mod file terms of payment terms of payment normally first it is maintained in vendor master now from the vendor master when you create a po they will get inherited to the purchase order you are purchase order okay and from the purchase order they will get in her terms of payment will get inherited to the invoice your invoice document that is nothing but miro okay so we will see in the vendor master where you will maintain the terms of payment so if i take if i go to our po let me come out of this okay if i go to me21 me23 yeah okay so this is our vendor the one the po which we created just now so if you go here header if you open the header you see here in the delivery invoice tab you can see the terms of payment terms of payment why how it is coming by default this payment terms is maintained in this vendor master so i'll go to the vendor master xk03 which we discussed in our master data classes if you go to the display vendor company code is thousand purchase organization is thousand so suppose select all go inside enter 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 here you see the terms of payment triple zero two so if you open it if you open the list so this is the one within 14 days three percent cash discount if you make the payment within 30 days 2% cash discount and if you make within 45 days there is no discount so this terms of payment is maintained in the vendor maintained in the vendor master so when you create the po for this vendor this payment terms will get defaulted to the PO, purchase order so i'll just create a brand new po again fresh po me21 yeah. okay so i enter the vendor the moment i enter the vendor 
the enter purchase organization group company code enter. the moment i enter this if i go to delivery and invoice tab see the payment terms got default <coughs> the payment terms got defaulted from the vendor cost and this will again get defaulted to the invoice document so what i will do I'll, we have already a po okay let me create a po i'll create for 100 po price plan time will enter enter okay so i'm creating a po check check for any issues no issues i'm saving the purchase order purchase order got created okay i'll take the purchase order i'll do the gr we go goods receipt enter enter the story look enter now check check for any issues no issues i'm posting it okay so material document posted now i'll take the po let's do the what you call invoice verification miro miro so when you go to miro enter the invoice date enter now when I, when i enter the purchase order here okay the moment i enter the purchase order here you see terms of payment has come over here okay so if you observe here if you observe here in the invoice miro transaction in the miro transaction in the basic data tab basic data tab terms of payment will be in display mode they will be in display mode okay but same terms of payment will be in editable mode in the payment tab in the payment tab they will be in editable mode and if you want to change it you can change it over there in the same transaction in the same miro transaction terms of payment will be in display mode in the basic data tab whereas in the payment tab they will be in editable mode where if you want to change it you can change it okay so i'll show you this so if you go to the miro transaction Okay, I will close this. Okay, so if you go to the Miro, if you see here in the basic data tab, terms of payment is credible. You cannot change it here. Okay, but if you go to the payment tab, see they are in editable mode. If you want to change it, you can change it. Let's say I want to make it 10 days. Within 10 days, let's say it is 2.5%. Okay, and let's say within 30 days, let's say it is 1%. So if you want to change it, you can change it that you can do it in the payment tab payment tab in the miro transaction that is what you need to understand so this is the terms of payment okay so now we will see some some theory part okay so to define to define when an invoice must be paid you can agree on terms of payment with your vendor so basically uh, how to make the payment you will have an understanding with your supplier vendor that is called terms of payment in the system the terms of payment contain the terms you have agreed with the business partner with regards to financial compensation due for deliveries and services rendered okay normally the terms of payment terms of payment can have three levels okay normally terms of payment will have three levels like for example if you pay within 5 days there is a 3% discount within 10 days a 2% discount and within 20 days you pay the net price okay so basically this the discount guaranteed by the vendor therefore reduces the cost price what okay so this is the terms of payment okay so the terms of payment normally configured by the finance team your fico consultant at this transaction obb8 okay so that's why this configuration path is also in the financial accounting they will do that anyhow i'll show this okay i'll show this let's go to the configuration spr sap reference img okay go to financial accounting financial accounting okay go to account receivable and accounts payable accounts receivable and accounts payable okay here go to business transactions okay and incoming invoice and credit memos incoming invoice and credit memos okay now the next one is maintain terms of payment here 
maintain terms of payment okay so here they have maintained it this is the one the one which is used in our vendor master is this one triple zero two so you have three levels here okay normally you will have three levels so terms of payment will normally will be created by the finance team fico team fico consultants will create you will not be you will not be creating in the real time but as a mm consultant you should know what is this terms of payment where it is used how they work all those things you should okay so that is the terms of payment next one we will be discussing is posting cross or net okay so when you do the invoice verification when you do the invoice verification you have the option of posting the gross posting the gross it means let's say your invoice value is 100 okay and your discount is 3% okay so you will be posting total 100 total 100 okay now let's say you want to post net value net value so let's say your invoice value is 100 then you are going to give 3% so 100 minus 3 that means you will be posting 97 whatever euros or inr whatever it is so whether you want to post gross gross or whether you want to post net value you will be deciding in the miro transaction okay so let's see that how to do that okay so this is our posting gross or posting net okay if you post the if you post the gross amount of an invoice the system ignores the cash discount amount when you enter the invoice that's what i told you so that three percent it will not consider whereas posting net if you post the net amount if an invoice the system posts the cash discount to stock or cost account okay so whether whether an invoice is posted gross or net depends on the document type of the accounting document this i will show it in the system okay so if you go to the miro transaction again if you go to the miro transaction i'll start it again i'm not posting it go to miro transaction again okay enter the invoice date enter now enter your purchase order okay now if you go to the payment go to details now see if you see here there is a field called document type so this document type decides whether you want to post gross value or net value so if you see here here we are posting gross invoice receipt based on this document okay if you want to post net you will you have to change it net invoice receipt this is where it will you will be deciding okay so this is the one so whether an invoice is posted gross or net depends on the document type of the accounting document so this again this document type is configured at this part at this part omr4 i'll directly jump to the transaction omr4 omr4 if you go to this transaction see here you have document types click on the document type if the document type we are using is re if you go to here re gross invoice receipt this is the one if you go to invoice this is the one gross invoice receipt so if you go to this gross invoice receipt go to detail select that one go to details you see here control data here this net document type checkbox is not activated that means we are posting gross if you want to post net you have to activate this checkbox this is the place where it happens again these document types normally will be created by the finance team okay you will not be creating in the real time but as a as a mm consultant you should know this these document types will be normally created by the finance team fico consultants they will create this is what called whether you want to post gross or rent while doing the invoice verification invoice entry okay so next one we will be talking about is invoices in foreign currency okay so invoices in foreign currency means let's say you have a vendor foreign vendor okay his currency is normally let's say you have local currency you have your local currency local currency and you have a vendor you have a vendor he is having his currency let's say he is having his own currency 
own currency. So now for this, you, you will be maintaining the exchange rate. Exchange rate. Okay, so I'll tell you this how how this will work. Okay, so suppose if I go back, I'll not say this. Let's go to M A twenty one yen. I'll go to vendor. I'll select. Let me take this vendor. Okay, purchase or purchasing group company code enter. Okay, motor construction. Okay, G B P. Just one more time. What is GBP? British pound. Okay. So let's say I'll take this vendor. I'll take this vendor. His vendor currency is this one. Okay. So basically, the currency of a vendor, currency of a vendor, again, it will be maintained in the vendor master. So suppose if I go to the vendor master, slash n xk03. If I go to this vendor one double zero eight, continue, 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 continue. Oh, this sorry, no. this is the one. Order currency. You see, his vendor currency is British pound, British pound. But our currency, this system currency is this system currency is maintained in euros, EUR. So due to that. Uh, so local currency is EUR euros, and vendor the one the vendor which we are looking at is GBP British pound. Okay, so now as the currency is not matching, you will have a exchange rate in the system. Okay, so if you go to the PO, you see here there is a exchange rate maintained. Exchange rate has come. So this exchange rate will be maintained by the finance team. They will maintain. Okay, so if there are two types, one is maintain exchange rate, maintain exchange rate. Okay, so that will be system will read that exchange rate and automatically it will propose. Another one is they will maintain manually. Another one is maintain exchange rate manually, manually. Another one is normally the exchange rate will be changing daily. It will not be a fixed one. Uh, normally, you know, our foreign currency exchange rates will be changing daily. So that will get updated daily, updated daily through a third party system. Through third party, third party system, third party system. Of course, this is, will be taken care by the FIT finance team, not by us. Only thing is, you need, what you need to understand is, whenever the currency is not matching with our local currency, system will propose the exchange rate. Either this exchange rate comes from here if they maintain manually in the system, okay, or it will get updated daily through a third-party system. This design will be taken care by FIT, FIT finance team. Okay, so this is the exchange rate. So now, what you need to understand here is. If the exchange rate is fixed, if the exchange rate is fixed, when you do the invoice verification, system will not allow you to change the rate. Will not will not allow you to change the rate in the invoice verification. Suppose now, if the exchange rate is not fixed, when you do the invoice verification, you can change the rate. System will propose the default exchange rate, but you can change it. But you can change it. That is what. If this rate is fixed. The system uses the exchange rate from the purchase order to convert the foreign currency to the local currency at code receipt and at invoice receipt also. Okay, so now if you see it here, if you go to our uh, what do you call? If you go to our uh, this thing here, as of now, exchange rate is not fixed. This checkbox is not activated. Now one more thing is, let's say I'll change the currency to uh, what do you call? Uh, let's say I'll change it to USD. If I change the currency to USD, you see the exchange rate will get changed. See, exchange rate got changed automatically. That means in the system somewhere they maintain the exchange rate between USD to Euro. Suppose now if you change the currency to Euro, Euro, you see what? See, it has become one because the for, as of now in the system for the company code thousand, the default currency is 
local currency is euro because this SAP is from Germany. So normally it will take the default currency as euro. See, that's why the exchange rate is one. Okay. Anyhow, I'll, I'll go to our normal exchange rate, GBP, uh, the vendor currency. Okay. I'll create the PO. Just one minute. Let me complete the PO creation. Enter net price. Let's I'll put by GBP. Okay, that's okay. Check. Okay. Now I'll I'll save the purchase order. Save. Purchase order got created. Okay, this is my purchase order. I'll do the Migo. Goods is it? M I G O. Two two four. Okay. I'll enter the store location. Check. Everything okay. Now post it. Okay, now I posted it. Now let's do the invoice verification. So when you do the invoice verification, slash n m i r. Okay, enter the date. Enter. Now I'll enter my PO. Enter. So we entered the data. Now if you go here, payment details. You see. Now here the exchange rate got proposed over here. Are you able to see? Why it is not changeable is means even before entering the transaction i need to enter otherwise once you enter the po you cannot change it so when when you are entering into the transaction itself you have to enter the new exchange rate if at all the the exchange rate from the po is got changed suppose if i go back i'll not say this when you go to miro transaction itself initially only you have to enter okay you go to here details here you have to enter the new exchange rate then after that you will enter the po if at all your exchange rate got changed from the PO, okay, so that is what the exchange rate. Now, I don't want to change the exchange rate from the PO, okay. So let's say I'll go to PO, PO again, ME22N. I'll go to change mode, of course. This PO we already done with good receipt, okay. That's okay. Now, let's say this is the exchange rate. I don't want this exchange rate to be changed in my invoice verification. Then you have to activate this checkbox. So once you activate this checkbox, system will not allow you to change this exchange rate in the invoice verification. That's what you need to understand. Okay. So this is what. If the if the exchange rate is not fixed, this is if if the this rate is fixed, the system uses the exchange rate from the purchase order to convert the foreign currency. To the local currency now if the rate is not fixed if the rate is not fixed the system uses the current exchange rate to convert the foreign currency to the local currency at good receipt and in invoice verification the system also suggests the current exchange rate as the exchange factor but you can change it that means let's say you created a PO on a particular date let's say creation of PO creation of PO, creation of PO done on, let's say, uh, uh, 20th of August, 2008, 2007, 2018, okay? Now, that day, let's say, that day, let's say, the exchange rate, let's assume scenario, where it is, that day, this is the exchange rate, assume a scenario, okay? Now, you are doing invoice verification, Invoice entry, invoice entry on let's say 0 to 0 09 2018. Now, so this is the exchange rate in the PO, but on this date, on the invoice entry date, system will not propose this date. Okay, it will propose the current date, current date exchange rate. Let's say on the day the exchange rate is let's say this one 0 0.650. So, system will propose this one, not this one, which is in the purchase order. That's what you need to understand here. It in invoice verification. In invoice verification, of course, the rate is not fixed. Huh? If the rate is not fixed, in invoice verification, the system also suggests the current exchange rate. Current exchange rate. Okay. As the exchange factor. But again, you can change it. Okay. So now you see when I try to enter the uh, uh, different exchange rate what kind of messages you will get let's say i'll enter exchange rate like 1.66 i entered it enter 
go to basic data date entered i'll enter the po i entered the po now i entered a exchange rate different from the po exchange rate you see what we already processing the document sorry just let me save this okay yes okay so um, now i'll enter see what you are getting exchange rate and currency copied from purchase order that's okay if you go to details sorry just one Achha, i made it fixed up i made it fixed oh sorry i made it fixed i'll change it just one minute i'll, I'll change it I'll, I'll not make it fixed see initially as i made it fixed system even though i entered a different exchange rate again it took from the po but now I'll, i am deactivating this exchange rate fixed i'll save the po okay and now again i will i'll start miro transaction freshly okay first i'll go to details sorry enter the invoice date go to exchange rate i'll put a different exchange rate i enter a different exchange rate now i'll enter the po see what warning message you are getting exchange rates exchange rate deviate from the table rate that means whenever you create whenever you go to a miro transaction system will read the current exchange rate from the tables which is maintained by the finance team as we main, as we enter a different exchange rate here system is giving you this warning message okay anyhow it will allow enter enter done then you can do the you can continue with your invoice verification that is what you need to understand either you can have fixed either you can have fixed exchange rate in the po you activate the checkbox or you can have without fixed also without fixed also that is what you need to understand and i always remember in the invoice verification provided if the exchange rate is not fixed system will always propose current exchange rate not from the po not from the po because po creation will be done on a different date and invoice verification will be done on a different date by that time the exchange rate will be changed that's what you need to understand okay so this is all about your foreign currency foreign currency now we will discuss on the invoices for pos with account assignment okay that means the consumable materials okay this we discussed during our uh, initial classes let's say you are purchasing a material folder 100 folders you are procuring let's say you are procuring total 300 folders okay among that 100 folders i need it for one cost center 200 folders for one cost center one cost center okay so this when you create the purchase order this account assignment you can do to the different cost center from here when you do the invoice verification you have the option of changing the quantities and cost centers in the invoice verification okay so i'll show you that this we already discussed different types of account assignments okay try to recollect our purchasing classes we discussed purchasing of consumable materials where we use the account assignment category as cost center so when you use this cost center as account assignment category so when you do the uh, invoice verification you have the option of changing the different quantities getting posted to different cost centers that that option is available okay so i'll show you that in the system provided you have partial invoice indicator available in your PO, your PO. okay so we will see this in the system i'll create a brand new PO, me 21 n okay me 21 am creating let me take the vendor sorry i'll take the old vendor enter purchasing organization group company code now account assignment category i'm selecting as key cost center we are procuring a non-stock item consumable material let's i'll enter folder and I'll, I'll, I'll enter for 100 quantity plant is thousand enter it is asking price on okay price 10 in okay enter order unit each okay material group because this is a non-stock item you have to enter all the data here there is no material code we are procuring a non-stock item and and it will be posted to the cost center k means cost center now here i'll enter the cost center 
okay now we have the option of dividing the quantity to multiple account assignments multiple cost centers try to recollect our initial classes this we discussed already during our procurement of consumable materials that time we discussed already okay so here if you say if you click on this button multiple account assignment just click on that you can split this quantity to different cost centers let's say i'll split this to 60 to this cost center and 40 to this cost center okay i'll enter the cost center okay so 60 quantity to this cost center and 40 to this cost center okay now here if you see the partial invoice indicator is activated distribute proportional so this indicator need to be activated in the PO. so now i'll save the PO. i'm creating a purchase order for a consumable material okay so save it okay with multiple account assignment multiple account multiple accounts okay so this is a PO. select the PO. let us do the gr goods receipt Miko. goods receipt purchase order enter the PO number enter so we are we are receiving the entire 100 100 folders check okay as yes, this is a non-stock item no need to enter the story location post it we did the migo with the migo now when you do the invoice verification miro miro enter the invoice date okay so what was the po number sorry what was the po number just one minute on me 23 this is a po number this is a PO number. If you take the PO, enter the PO number here. Okay. Now click on enter. Okay. Now if you see if you total amount is thousand, total amount is thousand. Now just scroll to right. If you scroll to right, here you have a button account assignment edit. So if you click on this button edit, okay, you see system is proposing from the PO 60 quantity to this one and 40 quantity to this cost center. This concept but here you have the option of changing the quantities here you can change it like this you i can make it to 70 and this i can make it to 30. that option is that you can change it that is what you are going to do that's what in the system will propose system will propose you have the purchase order you have the cost center for different quantities quantities now you make the gr you make the gr but while doing the invoice verification, you can change it. You can change as per your requirement. You can change as per your requirement. Okay, so that is the uh, invoice verification with multiple account assignment. Even even in the here, even if here, you can add one. Sorry, here you can add one more cost center also. Let's say this is thirty. What I want to do 15 to 1 cost center and another 15 to 1 cost center. That also you can do that here. Add the GL account, business area. You can add one more cost center here. Like that, you can do the splitting. Provided you have this partial invoice indicator activated in the purchase order. So this is what called items with multiple account assignments. Okay. So now the next one is we will be discussing is invoices for blanket purchase orders. So invoices for blanket purchase order means we discussed already the blanket purchase orders in our previous classes. So whenever you create a blanket purchase order, you give a validity date, you give a validity date, okay, and you give a value limit. So when you have this validity date and value limit, when you are doing the invoice invoicings when the limit is exceeded when the limit is exceeded on the miro transaction once the limit is exceeded system will not allow you to post the invoice and at the same time if you post the invoice out of the validity date out of the valid here the validity date is jan 01 to december 31 now if you try to post an invoice in the jan 15th let's say this year is 2018 okay now if you post an invoice for the same PO in Jan 15th of 2019 year, system will throw the error. Validity period exceeded. 
so in case of blanket purchase orders when you do invoice verification system will always check whether the limit is exceeded or validity period is exceeded that is what system will check okay so this is all about your uh, what do you call invoice verification part 2